Hello, my name is Kate O'Brien and I'm the Assistant Town Administrator for the Town of Dover. I'm here with Selectman Springett. Hi, Bob. Hey, Kate, how are you? Good, good, how are you doing? Good. We are both members of the town's COVID-19 Preparedness Task Force. Um, we started meeting in early March, early mid-March. Um, we first started meeting in the Great Hall um, I think a couple weeks later, we were meeting in the great, great Hall, but six feet apart. <laughs> now we're virtual for the time being. Um, it's definitely been an adventure, um, but can you talk a little bit about the task force? Sure. Um, you know, I, when you asked me to do this, the, one of the first things I thought about was how did this all get started? Um, and it seems to me like the, the, the origin story for the uh, preparedness task force is shrouded in mystery. Um, the best I can do um, is at a board of selectmen meeting, I think it was on March 12th, the board of health asked for a liaison uh, from the board of selectmen to work with them on COVID-19 issues. Uh, and I drew the short straw. Then, um, we got together and, and, and I found out um, that a number of departments in the town had been working on COVID-19 preparedness for some time, particularly the police, the fire department, ambulance, the emergency management team, the, uh, et cetera, as well as the Board of Health. Um, Board of Health had been working extensively with their counterparts in Sherbin and um, when the schools and the business in town. So there was an awful lot of activity uh, that had been going on around COVID-19, pretty much beginning in, in, at, uh, early on in January. Um, so when I joined as the liaison to the Board of Health, one of the things that people thought would be important was to be able to pull the, the diverse group of people who were working together on these issues together occasionally so that we could coordinate activity among the different groups, that we could share information as we all went along, um, that we could do status reporting as, as, um, as activity picked up. And then really, and, and this is really a sort of a silver lining in all this, we really needed to build relationships among the various groups because Dover is a very distributed governmental system. And so by pulling people together, you could leverage the power across various uh, departments. And so the group is made up of the Board of Health, Police Department, the fire department, emergency management, COA director, park and rec director, uh, representative from the schools, and uh, Kate, you and Chris. And communication um, has been a huge part of this. Um, it's been maybe the one of the few silver linings in, okay. in this whole um, scenario. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. It's it's um, you know the the, the first. The first bit of, of getting organized um, when you're dealing across such a broad group of folks is to try to figure out what the heck uh, you can do to add value. Um, and it, was, it, it came to the group pretty quickly that there were at least two or three distinct threads of work that needed to be addressed. And now we're talking, this is March 13th, Friday, by the way. It was Friday the 13th, we had our first meeting. Um, and the yeah, exactly. And the, the threads of work were um, building a support structure um, for those at risk or in need, um, assuming that there was going to be viral impact in the town. Um, so that was one discrete um, work thread. The second um, was to, and this really fell on more on the Board of, board of Health and the Visiting Nurse Association, et cetera, but to identify um, and confirm cases and track contacts. So that, that was that whole um, set of issues going on. And then the, the third issue uh, that you actually started with, uh, the third issue was uh, communication. One of the things that was going on back, it's hard to really remember what the world was like back in March. Um, and just to remind people, in March, there was really a lot of confusion. There was a tremendous amount of mixed messaging. Uh, the state had lagged in, in COVID messaging. Our BOH was actually out in front. Um, 
the federal government also lagged and there were conflicts in, in what people were being told to do or not do. So one of the, one of the real hard first, first tasks of, the, of, of, the, of our group was to make sure that the people in town got factual information and correct information and that we would become a source of trusted information basically. So communication um, was really the glue that we used to, to tie it all together. And the town um, had underinvested, as most people know, in their technology infrastructure. So we pretty much created a, a network communication strategy uh, from the ground up. We did strategically, we said we wanted to drive people to the website as the source to go to. Um, and so we did build a COVID-19 page that is pretty elaborate and pretty extensive. And over the last month and two months, it's really, it's really become a source of quite rich information. We augmented that with uh, a, a weekly update from the town administrator. Um, and the interesting thing about that is, again, since we have no uh, resident database, email database, it, it's hard to reach the 6,000, the 2,200 houses, 6,000 residents, um, because the, the media channels have just exploded. So one of the ways we, we did email was to uh, contact residents who have extensive email lists and ask them if they would not forward uh, our weekly uh, update to their network and they all did. And we're reaching a heck of a lot of people these days through a distributed email network. So that was cool. Um, then we also have recently established both town Facebook and um, Twitter accounts where we do updates. Um, and now we're doing video. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty remarkable uh, growth in our communications media. Uh, sophistication since March 13th. <laughs> Congratulations, one and all. <laughs> um, that sticks out to me um, from the beginning is how seamlessly all of the departments, especially like the emergency type departments with fire, police, um, Board of Health, kind of seamlessly they had all this training and they had all this knowledge, not specifically for COVID-19, but for disasters like this, um, certain experiences, and how it, they seamlessly just fell into their training and it just all came together. Yeah, they, they, the town is lucky. I mean, we have really good people as employees. Um, we have really extensive volunteer network, and we have a lot of talented people who are very generous with their time. And, and so, yes, within the silos, right, people were very well prepared. And then across silos where people tend to work together. So EM, EM, the emergency management group with the police, with the, with the highway department, there's a natural affinity and they tend to work together. So they have that relationship. BOH, you know, was sort of as an independent board sort of sat in, in its place doing its job. And again, qu highly qualified people. Um, and then, you know, but we all were playing our own roles. And so the, the, the magic of the preparedness task force was in, it was in putting it together and then leveraging that experience and getting the work, building the relationships across the silos. And there was real power there. And, and yes, it looks seamless. <laughs> <laughs> so I know we've already started the road to recovery, um, but what does it look like right now for the task force? And um, what are we planning? The, the um, so I said March 13th, I would say by in one month, it, by the middle of April, um, we had stumbled our way to a successful set of protocols and processes uh, on both the support residents that meet in town, um, con contacting businesses, setting up senior hours, getting the transfer station to adhere to social distancing and et cetera, et cetera. So all that infrastructure, all those processes and protocols were pretty much well, well in place. Um, it took us a while to, to um, figure out how best to handle the traffic flow on Pawisic Street in particular on weekends as people wanted to access the outside world, uh, the, uh, the natural world. And we have transfer station opens in, Voices Street, as all residents know, uh, is a 
pretty windy, narrow road. So that took a while to, to get right, but we think we have that, if not solved, well on its own way. And so as a preparedness test task force, you're gonna go, okay, so what's next? Um, so early in May, I'm sorry, mid-April, we began to talk about what we would need to do to reopen the town business when and if we got the yellow light from the state. And so there were several, again, discrete pieces of work that had to get done. Um, and Chris Dwelly, our town administrator, was working with the town departments to figure out how and when we would uh, move open. Um, and that work has been underway, been ongoing. So um, actually we feel like we're in pretty good shape from a planning perspective. Obviously, if, if and when we, we do, we'll follow all the protocols around social distancing, mask wearing inside to make sure that both residents and employees are, are safe. That, that's really sort of priority number one is, as we go through that. Um, our, our moderator, Jim Rapetti, and town clerk, Felicia Hoffman, have been working diligently to figure out how and if and when we can do some of the municipal functions like open hearing, town meeting, Andy Orsetti from the Warren Committee, uh, and town election. Right now, we're scheduled to have the town election on, I believe it's June 15th, um, and that work is in progress. We're still sort of scratching our collective heads about how we would have a town meeting, uh, given that we're prohibited from having groups of more than 10, uh, 10 or, yeah, I think it's nine actually, but let's say 10 uh, get together at every, any given time or place. But the, the uh, state has, the state legislature has passed uh, laws that allow us to function from a financial point of view, so it's taken some pressure off, but it, we really would like to get through um, pressing the budget for fiscal year 2021. Um, and then the, the thing that we just started to talk about, um, really about yesterday, um, was, uh, was this idea of, okay, so we're talking about town services, uh, and we have a plan around town services, now what do we do for all the boards and commissions that have kind of been suspended because they're viewed as sort of non-essential. So that needs to be considered. And so that goes on the list. And, uh, and then finally, there were several uh, really major initiatives that were undertaken in the last half of, of uh, in, the, in the fall of 2019 um, that were, were put in limbo, uh, including reporting to the town on a hydrology study, uh, there was a, things going on around the municipal vulnerability program that we need to address. There was the Hail Reservation Task Force that was put together, and I'm sure there are several other things that were, were back um, And then we got we got to think through how we re-engage that arm of, of, of government to make sure that we're, if we're not firing on all eight cylinders, we have at least six working uh, in the short term. And, and we anticipate, I mean, again, this is not, anything um, written in concrete. But, but we anticipate opening, again, when and if we get the, the yellow light between now and end of summer. So it'll be a gradual rollout over, over three or four months. Again, and we'll, we'll go through this in trial and error. We will check with other towns and other communities to make sure we're, we're doing best practices, but it's, it'll just be a slow. And then I guess the last thing, um, Again, this is sort of just an asterisk thing for the fall. There's been a lot of talk in the press um, about um, a second wave, a potential second wave of infections in the fall, flu season. And um, we talked at today's task force meeting about being able to leverage the infrastructure that we've built in terms of uh, you know, processes and protocols, the communications infrastructure that we built, and then leveraging the experience that we built as a team to make sure that as we roll out of the, as we reopen and we'll move into the fall, that we are well prepared to handle any uh, increase in infections or hotspots in our area. And that sort of rounds it out. And we think that we're, that'll, we're, we're, right now, we think that that'll run from at least September through year end. Again, to note that we have a, a dedicated COVID-19 webpage, um, and also we are on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We have the COA as a, as, a, as a point of contact, too, for many of our senior population. Yes, uh, the COA has really spearheaded um, this for us, and regardless of age, they are there to help out anyone, answer any questions, and provide resources. To, 
meals, um, picking up groceries. Um, they are, again, they've been phenomenal. Terrific. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Bye-bye.